them. If you call us so much consistently, then you will be here to participate and win prizes courtesy of our sponsor, Prince Engineer, Jeremy Shilon, FNSC. Now that is that's about that. We have our guests already seated with me in the studios, and uh, we'll take this very sh very short break. When we return, um, I'll let you know who my guest is and what he's going to be discussing with us today. Welcome back. My guest for today is Joseph Olawale Akinjele, a professor of civil engineering, and um, he he obtained his B.Sc., Master's, Ph.D. from in civil engineering from the um, University of Ibadan, and um, he is a member of so many um, bodies, including the Nigeria Society of Engineers, Institute of Civil Engineers, and Institute of Bridge and Structural Engineers. So is definitely more than qualified to be here on this program. Welcome to Engineering Nigeria, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, and he will be discussing on a, a topic he has captioned civil engineering in STEM. What does STEM mean? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So civil engineering in STEM, that is the topic that he will be taking us through. And after which, um, I will ask questions. Definitely, you can call in also in the course of the, the program and ask your question. So I'll hand over the, the floor to him while he takes us on this topic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, my uh, producer. Uh, this evening I will be talking about uh, STEM, civil engineering in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Let's start with what is civil engineering. It is a branch of engineering that is concerned with the design, construction, and maintenance of roads, bridges, dams, buildings, airports, harbors, irrigation projects, power plants, water and sewage system, and similar structures. It's a very, very wide uh, field of engineering, but it has been uh, broken down into seven major parts. The first one, we have the structural engineering. The second one, we have the construction engineering and management or project management. Then we talk about materials, that's the third one, construction materials. Then energy, water, environmental engineering. Then the fifth one is geotechnical and foundation engineering. Then we have the highway, aviation, and transportation engineering. And the last one, sustainable and resilience infrastructure system programming. That is the use of computer programming in civil engineering structures. Then we talk about STEM. I just want to bring out just one part of the STEM, the TDA, the technology. Because without technology, we can't be talking about engineering. So we say, what is technology? It is the application of scientific knowledge to the practical aims of human life. Or, as it is sometimes phrased, it is the change and manipulation of human environments. It can also be the science of the application of knowledge to practical purpose. Applied science, a scientific method of achieving a practical purpose. What we are trying to say in the nutshell is uh, technology is just the manipulation of the environment to suit the human being. Why need for civil engineering? So with that, why, why do we need to study civil engineering? One, civil engineering uh, started as long as we can remember between about 4,000 to 1,000 BC in the ancient Egypt, uh, the Mesopotamian area where we have the present day Iran and Iraq, you can remember the uh, biblical story of the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. You can remember what happened there. The people there, they were able to use uh, a burnt brick and slime, which is a modern day a bitumen, to build that structure. So we can see when Yari started as long as we can remember. Of course, when human beings started to abandon nomadic existence, there is a need for shelter. So definitely man had to construct a house or somewhere to stay. Also, man by nature is nomadic. Man cannot stay in one place, always looking for 
they are sustainable. So there was a need for roads, railway, waterways, air travel, and so on and so forth. Also, the need for energy. If there is no energy, no power, we can't be here today. We can't see ourselves from the other hand. So these are the need for civil engineering. Now, when we talk about civil engineering, there are old technologies, civil engineering. The first set of old technologies that we are aware are the pyramids. We know of the Egyptian pyramids. In those days, slaves were used to construct the pyramids in Egypt before the use, uh, the use of modern day machinery like cranes and so many other machines that we use these days. Let's talk about modern day uh, civil engineering structures. Um, we have bridges which were constructed using timber logs in those days spread across the river, roofs are tied, you know, just to cross from one point of a river to the other. But in modern day, we have uh, the cable state and the suspension bridge and the uh, reinforced concrete bridge that we have all over, like in Abekuta. In Nigeria today, we have just one cable state bridge, the Ikoyi link bridge between uh, Ikoyi and Leki. That's a picture of something that is similar that you are looking on the screen. That is what we call Cable State Bridge. Also, we have the uh, suspended bridge, the one you are seeing at the background at the Opera in Sydney, Australia. Also, you look at that uh, beautiful roof shape of the Opera building, it looks like feather. They are made of mainly what we call shells. These are part of what the civil engineer would design and we construct it. Of course, we talk about modern day structures like dams. Dams is using is using holding waters. I mean, like the onion dam that we have in Abekuta, these are part of the work that the civil engineer will do. We design it, then we build it. Also, building. On my coming to this building this evening, I saw this uh, glass uh, approach. Hmm. You know, in modern day building, that approach, those glass glazing can be used to generate electricity. So these are part of the things. The picture you are looking there is one example where we can use a glazing technology to generate power. Also, uh, the Bokalifa, the tough, tallest building in the world today, is a masterpiece. When you talk about civil engineering, uh, that building is about 828 meters tall, just about 130 meters short of one kilometer. So just try to imagine a building that is as long as one kilometer. This structure is built in a desert environment where the wind speed is very high. We call that type of uh, loading sway load that can bring the building down. But so many tests were done before the building was sited there. Of course, the tapered shape of the Bokalifa, that's the pencil shape, was to reduce the impact of the wind. It's not just a design that someone just, you know, just to reduce the impact. That's why we have that tapered shape so that the wind cannot bring it down. Also, the foundation also was was massive because it was built on the, an island very close to the sea. So many tests were done. The geotechnical engineer does their work. They do soil tests. The foundation man will do his design before we have such structures. Also, these days, we have what we call the kinetic footfall. That is, you can be walking, and that floor, we can use it to generate electricity. I mean, the kinetic energy that is generated as we walk along can generate electricity. Those are the new technology that we have in uh, civil or structural engineering. Apart from that one, also, we have uh, the kinetic road also. Uh, your, when you drive your vehicle, some cells were placed underneath the road. By the time you are riding, the kinetic energy can generate electricity. So it's not only solar that we can use to generate electricity. I mean, we can use anything, and that's what we call technology. And that's the beauty of engineering. Of course, then we talk about, you know, the other time I was talking about software, predictive software. You know, this day we talk about AI, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is made of software programs that are developed by people to think, for the machine to think the way we human beings can think. Also, in civil engineering, we have some predictive software like that uh, that can help us ensure innovative structures in civil engineering to make sure that they are very safe. They can simulate, we can simulate a structure. What you see there is a beam that is loaded, how the load is distributed in that beam, and the other one you see there is the reinforcement that is inside the beam. This is generated by a software that is called ANSYS. And there are so many other 
software like that that we can use also for our 3D model, uh, architectural model using AutoCAD, Cyber 3CD, so many software like that. These are part of the things that we teach our students in the university how to use a you know, computer software to predict and to do so many other things. Now, in those days, when you hear of mic microscope, microscope, you only think that maybe it's people who are in the sci uh, biological yeah, sciences that need microscope. In engineering today, we use microscope even to investigate our materials. Uh, we use the scanning electron microscope to study the microstructure of our material. The picture you are seeing there is your cement. When you mix your cement with water and it becomes very hardened, that is the micro, what you are seeing. This other one is your timber. When you slice your timber and you place the same microscope on it, these are the features that you are going to see. You know, that one looks like honeycomb. It's not honeycomb, it's, it's your timber. So many things are going on. Also, we have what we call the modular construction. These days, you know, when you don't have enough space to construct, you can construct in a particular place and use your crane to bring it and place it in position. We call that one precasting. So these are the beautiful things that are going on in civil engineering. Then lastly, what is the requirement to become a civil engineer? Of course, it starts from your primary school. Whoever has the mind of becoming a civil engineer must love mathematics. There is a, 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 a subject that they teach in primary school, they call it quantitative reasoning, of course, your basic sciences. Quantitative reasoning because engineering is a course, I mean, is, is a profession that requires someone to think. I remember in our undergraduate days, I used to, we used to have a lecturer, he's late now, the Baba would tell us, if you are not a thinker, you cannot be here because engineers are thinkers. So we need such, such thing. Then in secondary school also, your mathematics, your physics, further mathematics, chemistry, geography, technical drawing, of course, English language. And for your WAEC, your 5-0 level must be complete. It must consist of your, your English, mathematics, physics, chemistry, and any of these other courses, geography, technical drawings, for that matter, depending on the university. Then, of course, for your UTME, you must write your English, mathematics, physics, and chemistry. If you are able to pass this and you enter the university, then your career will start from that place. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, um, Professor Akinjeli, for for that um, wonderful, wonderful one. I spoke, he's been, he's, he spoke about um, civil engineering in STEM, and um, you agree with me that he spoke well, so to speak, and um, we are going to be asking him some questions. So if you have a question, um, please go ahead, pick up the phone, the phone lines are on your screen, call us, and if you ask him a question, you'll be able to answer um, our question for the day and win a prize, courtesy of our sponsor for the, of the program, Prince Engineer MC, MC Shilon. Now I want to take you up some, on some few things that I've seen. Number one, um, we, we could see that uh, engineering is, is still evolving. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it used to be in a certain way some, some, some d decades and centuries ago, but now it's better now. Now there is um, what, what, what people call global best practices, especially when it comes to civil engineering. Now, um, is that um, applicable in our uh, schools, especially in the tertiary institution? Okay, we have a call. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Glory. How are you doing? I'm fine, sir. All right. The condition is you have to ask my guest a question before you answer my question. So go ahead and ask him yes, a question. Sir. I think, sir, so I mentioned about glass power, but I can use it to generate electricity. So yeah. I have to ask, ask it has blackout. Okay. You can use this for for generation of electricity. All right. So to ask, how can we use it? How can we use it to generate electricity? All right. All right, Glory. Um, you answer a question, but you can go ahead and ask answer my question too. Um. But the answer, the answer to the question is called linear. All right, Glory. I'll let you know if you are correct. Keep watching. Thank, Thank you so sir. much and listen to the Thank answer. You, from Prof. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, to answer our question, it's a very simple technology. You know, to generate electricity, we have the solar panel. Mm -hmm. You know, here in the solar panel, you have this glazing uh, face that covers the solar panel. So instead of putting normal glass windows, mm -hmm. 
you put your solar panel, you know, in the frontage, like the approach to OGT TV now. Yeah. Those glasses, you can use the solar panel, but very light one, so you can generate electricity. So from uh, using OGT TV as a specimen, from yes. that sliding door, instead of using the, the no, not the sliding door, the the, the, the approach, the approach yeah. those glaze, I mean, those facade. Yes. Uh huh. So you can so use the generator. We can also generate electricity. Yes. Electricity from that. Yes. Yes. Is so, Instead of using the normal glass, mm. you use uh, the solar panel. Okay. You understand that okay. has been synchronized okay. to, to, to do the work to generate electricity. All right. Like I said, engineering is interesting and it's, it's evolving. So I was asking about um, how compliant is the curriculum of um, our universities to the 21st century? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the curriculum of Nigeria University. Uh, is designed to follow what entails in other countries of the world. And that's why when our graduates finish here, they can fit into any society. Uh, presently, there is a, a new technology, we call it the OB, OBE in engineering. Mm -hmm. It's from the, what we call the Washington Accord. Okay. That is, we have to fashion our curriculum to suit certain standards so that our students, our products can work anywhere you know presently in some countries when our student or our engineering graduate get there they want them to write professional exam but by the time we start this ob there will not be need for that because we have to comply with some condition mm. you understand so also so when, when is that likely to, to start that have started because already two universities i think covenant university and i think federal university of technology mina have started all other universities in Nigeria who are taking engineering, they have to start, I mean, very soon. So the curriculum has been designed and the condition. Now, for current to accredit your program, you must have the OBE standard. Without the OBE standard, that university will not be accredited. So it is a law, it has been accepted. So now it will make our university product to be well respected wherever they go to outside Nigeria. Okay. Um, you, you are you, according to your, this, you are, you, you specialize in research on cement, concrete, and composite materials. Material, yeah. Um, is there a specialty like that in civil engineering? And um, can you just um, give us a little yeah. bit of what what that is all about? Uh, you know, civil engineering is very wide. Of course, your first degree, B.Sc. or B.Eng. Civil engineering. Then at your master's level, you start specializing. Uh, you go into material. I am into structures and materials. Civil engineering structures and materials. Cement composite and all those, they fall under materials. So it's part of civil engineering because without the cement, of course, and these days we are talking of LC3, LC3 cements. That is, we are moving away from the normal cement. The normal cement we have now is one of the material that contribute a lot to this ozone layer, carbon, climate change, climate change and everything like that. Now, Engineering, civil engineering now going to the use of LC3, then something we call another one, geopolymer concrete, where okay, we have zero we have carbon another, dioxide. We have another caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you doing today? Fine, sir. All right, my, any question for my guests? I want to ask um, from, the, um, from our guests that where can we get um, that? Is there a specific tool for civil engineering? Is there a specific word? School for civil engineering. School for civil engineering. Okay, what are the, the schools? All right. Um, you want to answer my question? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Um, the answer is Carlos Junior. All right. All right, keep watching. You we'll, will know the, uh, the winner of today's um, quiz. You want to know uh, what universities as institutions that are studying very Virtually all universities in Nigeria offer civil engineering. Virtually all universities. Any university that have faculty of engineering or technology, just look at their curriculum, you see civil engineering there. So UI, IFE, my school, you now, Unilab, Covenant, I mean, measure those universities. Even at polytechnic level also, we have civil engineering departments. All right. Um, we have to go. Our time is up. Thank I'd like to much. say a big thank you to you, sir, for, for coming on the program and shedding a lot of light on civil engineering as a, as a profession 
that much. All right, we, we, we have to go. Um, the, our two callers got our question correctly. And so, um, since you are watching, please, I'll give you a number to call. Call this number 0703-161-1497. The answer is Carlos Lidios. And um, for the question for the week, because we have to, the conversation has to continue on our various social media platforms um, till next week when we meet. So, um, what is what level of organization is Parajira? What what level of organization is Parajira? That's our question for the week. If you know the answer, you can drop it on all our various social media platforms. If you get it correctly, you get a prize cost of our sponsor, Prince Engineer Yemsi Chilon, FNSC. Thank you so much for always watching us and thank you to my sponsor for always being there. And the next week is another time. Until then, my name is Tundi Olaniro. Bye bye.